In this vid, I'm going to be reviewing Pokemaniac 9510's Samurott for Alligator deck. He calls it Overkill, and he probably calls it Overkill because he's got a few other lines of Pokemon in there to give you some twists and turns. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. Overkill really is Overkill because it's got so many lines of Pokemon going on that it's a little difficult to keep up with. But let's go ahead and see if we can work through some of them. First off, he's got a 1-1 Zorark line. Zorark is a great counter for just about anything. I mean, it's horrible against fighting decks, but it can even in a fighting deck, it can still uh, copy your opponent's attack and do some pretty good damage. We're not running DCE in this deck, which is going to slow that Zorark down. However, if we can slowly attach water to it as we go, and, uh, and kind of have it sitting on the bench just in case, I think it's definitely something that can be uh, very useful in this deck. In fact, um, I might even consider increasing that line to 2-2, two, two, but it depends on how often you find yourself using it. The next one that he has is a 2-2, two, two, or sorry, 2-1 Lantern Prime line. And I'm actually quite a fan of Lantern Prime. Powerful Spark does 40 plus 10 more damage for each energy attached to all of your Pokemon. So this means you could actually be safe in running DCE, um, because DCE would help out with Lantern, as well as be able to attach to Zorak for a one hit. And DCE counts for two energy because it doesn't read energy card. Um, so that's a really big attacker or it could potentially be a really big attacker, and it works excellent in water decks because you can say that uh, its Poke Power Lantern's type is water, which means that it can be paired perfectly with Feraligator Prime, and can be uh, and you can attach as many water energy cards from your hand to Lantern or any other water Pokemon as you like. Um, essentially, this is all for alligators in here for. He's got a 2-1-2 line, so I think that's a pretty solid line. I don't think there's any reason to change it. For Alligator Prime also works extremely well with Ability Samurai, which does uh, 70 for Hydro Pump and 10 more damage for each water energy attached to this Pokemon. So if you have 3 water energy attached, it's automatically going to do 100. If you have 10 water energy attached, it's going to do uh, 170. Um, hopefully you don't have that many energy attached to one Pokemon, but just a scenario. Um, another reason this is a pretty big card is because of its ability, Shell Armor, which reduces any damage done to it by 20. Uh, if we ever get, I believe it's Ev Evilite, it's a Pokemon tool that essentially acts as a permanent defender. When that comes out, that would be something great to pair with Samurai and just make it a very difficult tank to take down. What I would recommend is increasing your Sam Samurott line to a 424 instead of a 323 and adding one non ability Samurott. And the reason I recommend that is not only is Surf a decent attack if you're forced to attack with it, but you can also use Pike, which would be your only sniper in this deck. Um, eventually, when Catcher comes out, I would definitely recommend running Catcher. But just in case, Pike is great. Not to mention, if your opponent has two babies on their bench, or two opponents, you know, within 30 h 30 hit points for knockout. You can use catcher to drag one up to the active position. Pike does 30 to the active as well as 30 to the bench, and you can take two prizes in one turn. So I think this would be a very um, a highly recommended addition to your deck, and something that's not going to be too difficult to put in. Your starter are two Menamphies. Well, Menamphie essentially works as a Cleffa, except it only allows you to draw five cards, but it doesn't put you to sleep. And it also has a much higher HP, so it can actually withstand an early attack or two. And as, as for a water deck, it works out very well. Uh, the one Pokemon, I th or actually there's a few Pokemon I think you could drop. Currently you have a Girafferig in your deck, which whose attack, I believe you're using this for its first attack for show off, which searches your deck for up to two basic energy cards, show them to your opponent, and put them in your hand. I think we can better find I, I think we can find energy cards with some trainers and supporters or supporters are what I have in mind. Better than wasting an attack with Girafferig. But it was a very interesting idea. I just think we can do it a little more efficiently. You also have a one one line of Suicune Entei Legend. Suicune Entei Legend essentially works like the Blastoise, where you can snipe anything you want for 100, and then you return two water energy to your hand. 
the problem is is that I don't think this is very necessary. Um, yes, it's a big sniper, but with the release of Pokemon Catcher, you should be able to drag up things that you want to do big damage with your Samurott or Lantern, and even throwing in the Pike Samurott gives you that little sniper if you need it. Uh, legends are difficult to get out, and I think if we drop the Legend and drop the Giraffe Rig, that would allow you to increase that Lantern Prime line to 2-2, two, two, and increase that Samurott line, and even maybe increase the Zorark line without losing any consistency. So, let's take a look at your energy line. You have one fire, which is in there for the Suicune Entei Legend. Uh, like I said, I suggest that you drop that, so I would also suggest that you drop the fire. You have one lightning in for the Lantern Prime. I would definitely re recommend increasing that to two, maybe even three lightning energies. If your one lightning is prized, that pretty much means you're not going to be able to attack with Lantern, and that's not going to be a good thing. You have one rescue energy. I don't know if rescue energy is really needed. Um, if you keep it the one one Zorark and you you know you're in a situation where you're going to need to use it more than once, that might be a good idea. But only running one lightning or one rescue energy in a deck means that the chances of you running into it when you need it are going to be pretty slim. So I would recommend either dropping that all together or increasing it to two possible. Well, I think probably increasing it to two would be more than more than enough. You have 10 water, which I think is a pretty good number. If you increase your rescue to, to 2 and increase your lightning to 2 or 3, I think that'll give you definitely enough energy in the deck to supply your needs. So let's take a closer look at your trainers and supporters, because this is where I think we can tweak it quite a bit. Uh, you have, let's see, um, you have a couple of good hand refreshers. You've got a couple of Pont. Um, I love Pont. It's, I think, the most consistent. Oops, sorry for knocking the camera. Consistent of the hand refreshers, drawing, shuffling your hand, and then drawing six. There's also Juniper, which lets you discard. You're running three Juniper. Though that worries me a bit because three Juniper is 21 cards. It's over a third of your deck, not including the cards you're discarding. This is a really good way to just fly through your deck and I have a feeling you're going to be decking out quite a bit. So I would recommend decreasing the Juniper line to one or two and increasing your other hand refreshers like Pont and possibly even adding in a copycat or two to, to maybe three or four. Um, I don't see, unfortunately, any collector or doable. So depending on what you have at home, I would definitely recommend a combination of the two um, or one or the other depending on what you have. But the, I would definitely recommend two or three collector with one or two dual ball just to try and get those basic Pokemon out to get you going. That's really going to be a lot of the speed in this deck is getting those basics out. You run three communication which I think is a great number especially pair that with Pokemon collector. You search your basics and then you throw them right back in there for the evolutions that you want. You have two rare candy uh, I think that's an excellent number. You have the Samoroth that can use it, as well as the Feraligator. And you also have three Junk Arm, which can be used to reuse those rare candies if you do need them. You run Revive, and I don't think you really need Revive. I think you'd be better suited to run Flower Shop instead. I know it's a supporter, but it gives you three Pokemon and three energy um, to shuffle in your, into your deck instead of just one basic. I like to see revives in basic decks that run very powerful basics, like Reshiram and Zekrom. In a deck like this that runs a lot of Stage 2s, I like to see Flower Shop Lady instead. You do have some other ways of getting your energy from the discard pile. One Fisherman and two Energy Retrieval. I don't know if you really need all of that. Um, I think may I honestly think that maybe you could even drop the fisherman, but definitely dropping the one uh, one of the energy retrievals and just making this maybe one one, or even dropping that all together and just having this one. You have ten water, and with the flower shop in there, I don't think you're going to have too many problems with energy. But then again, you just might. So um, one two at the max energy retrieval cards or a combination of fishermen depending on what you prefer I think would be good and you can always junk arm for energy retrieval to use it again 
Um, you run one judge, which I think might actually hurt this deck. You really want larger hands to draw that energy. I know it can disrupt your opponent, but I'm afraid that you're going to be stuck with it in your hand and not be able to do anything else and end up hurting yourself uh, just as much. You run Pokemon Circulator, um, which is great for getting those sleeping babies out of the way, uh, your opponent's sleep active sleeping babies out of the way. But I think once uh, Pokemon Catcher comes out, we can definitely swap that out for a few Pokemon Catchers. That will work much better. Uh, you have two Legend Box, which since I th if you drop the Legend, you can drop the Legend Box. Obviously, you won't need those. And you run two Twins. Um, I personally just prefer the one twins, however, you, you're playing this deck obviously a lot more than I am, and if you're finding that you're really consistently behind, especially to start with, maybe running two twins would be a good play for you. So, um, like I said, I typically just run one, but if you're finding that two is, is really working for you, then definitely go for two. I would recommend one switch in the deck, just in case you don't want to pay that energy cost, and I think switch is just... Switch is just one card that I think should be one in of every deck. Um, I think you can drop the cheerleaders cheer. I think that would be better served as a pont, um, you know, a, another more stable hand refresher card. And other than that, I think that's about it. If you decide to run the the one fisherman and the two energy retrieval, I think a better supporter than cheerleaders cheer would be engineers adjustments. You discard one energy to draw four, but with the high energy retrieval uh, line that you run, um, or energy recovery line that you run, you could easily get that back. Um, so that would be a suggestion for that. And I think that's about it. Um, you can always uh, throw in a couple of plus power for your Zorark when you're matching up the Zekrom or the Reshiram just to make sure you knock it out in one hit. But again, I don't think it's really needed. Obviously, the Reshiram, you're, actually, the Reshiram you're going to be able to knock out quite easily. So it'll mainly be for the Zorark and, or sorry, the Zekrom. And hopefully they've already attacked you once without any defenders and have done a little damage to themselves. So I don't think that's a necessity. Um, so I think that's about it. Thank you very much for submitting your deck, and it was really cool to meet you at Nationals. Um, yeah, this is one guy, uh, I, I thought it was pretty cool to actually meet a YouTuber at Nats. So, Pokemaniac9510, really awesome guy, definitely go check him out and sub to him. And, like I said, thanks again for submitting your deck. And, um, if anyone else would like their decks to be reviewed, just send me a PM with your deck list. And it'll take several days to get it uploaded because of the long upload line, but it will go up. So, thanks again for watching.